Most fans of the show will look at this character and this actress and say, oh, come on, nobody else ever in a million years could have played this part. You ever notice that every time Shane walks into the room, someone makes crying? We were trying to cast Shane, and I was getting discouraged because there was nobody who just remotely evoked Shane-ness. Shane? Yeah. Hey. And then all of a sudden this girl appears on screen. And I called from the other room to Miggy, who was in the kitchen. You've got to come in here. Shane just appeared. How come you didn't call me the other night? I left like five messages. Oh, well, uh, you know, I haven't had my cell phone. So when I go get my cell phone and I check my messages, I will call you. I remember Eileen and I going, oh my God, she's so perfect. And they're like, I don't get it. I'm like, trust us, she's so perfect. Just give us this one. The president of the network was in love with Leisha. And I said, you know, you just you gotta let me have this girl, this Kate Menick girl for Shane. She is Shane. And he said, but I love Leisha. She's just so cool. She's fabulous. She has this effervescence. And I said, how about if we cast Leisha as Alice? We'll reconceive the part of Alice for Leisha. And I'll do that if you let me have Kate as Shane. I had no hesitation. I don't think that you should ever limit yourself just because a character is gay. Fresh meat. New blood. Crispy. The more actors that take on those challenges, uh -uh the easier it will be for everybody. There just are fewer good roles for actresses. They would rather play a role that really is rich and layered and nuanced and take a chance. I realized, wow, nothing like that is on television. And, you know, as fate would have it, I wound up getting this incredible job. Wow. Production of The L Word began in the summer of 2003. Action! With lesbian portrayals finally in sight, they were also very much in mind. I am so thrilled to be a part of this show. It's socially relevant and it's groundbreaking. It is at its core a lesbian material. The time hasn't been right. The lifestyle is the norm. And the time is now. The gay, lesbian, and bisexual community need a voice. It's going to be a historical moment for television because it, it hasn't been done. Season one, entry. The Jenny character was our access point coming into a lesbian community. Tim was sort of the bridge, the gap between those two worlds. Oh, can we go? Like I think of first season, I think of that bathroom scene where Marina pushes Jenny up and they have that first kiss. She was sort of this very placid character who was sort of like a blank slate. What are you going to make up your mind between dick and pussy? And spare us the gory bisexual details, please. Well, for your information, Dana, mm -hmm. that was the first day of work. I'm looking for the same qualities in a man as I am in a woman. Big tits. I think I overacted my brains out because I, I felt like I was in a high school play. <laughs> we were all still nervous around Jennifer. I like, Jennifer's the big star. Well, how do you talk to Jennifer? You, you do it. Jump in any time. Okay. Um, we wouldn't be your friends if we just stood back and let you get so what? Boring. 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 Aaron, Leisha, and I, whenever we had scenes together, we'd always get together a couple days before and go over them and rehearse them. That's back when we used to rehearse. <laughs> we love you so much. We love you guys. We do. Ditto. Love you. Often you're told that dynamics among women are not that easy, but in fact, we found it to be the opposite. We were just kind of this team of women who cared so much about making these characters come to life and making the friendship seem real. I had a really great feeling, and I just saw such a beautiful collaboration. I thought, no, this is, this is special. I would like the shot to move over. People were so excited to be here. There was just a way that everybody felt like, oh my God, we're doing something really important. If it's not about learning or exploring or opening people's minds and cultures about the rest of the world, then, you know, what's my purpose? Well, for me, one of the things that was most appealing was giving that young girl who maybe was growing up in some kind of rural community some representation of a community to which she belonged but to which she had no access. I'm so lucky to have you. I actually felt sort of an obligation to try to, one, get my character right and do my character justice, and then so felt an obligation to the gay community. I know the sex scenes were very thought out and everyone was very nervous and very aware of making them real, and not like the typical, like, tickling lesbians <laughs> you know, talking about. Love scene in the pilot was a reshoot. I remember having Rose Trochet count to 10, just so we could get the timing right. 
which just made me laugh hysterically. Everything was very, very specific and cut to six years later, like, ah, whatever. So we do another love scene, we're gonna have to get out the lockers. I'm breaking up with her because she took her medicine. We'd be changing on each other oh. in the nursing home. Let me play checkers with her. Her diaper sank. <laughs> My greatest responsibility, I feel, is to be as truthful as I can. We certainly can't represent all lesbians in every end of the spectrum. I actually don't look at it as pressure. I look at it as the biggest thrill of my life. I don't feel any pressures right now, but I, look where we are. We're, we're shooting a series that has an air jet. We don't know, it's, we don't know <clears throat> what the response is going to be, so right now it's very safe. It felt like it was a big moment, kind of like when I was younger at camp watching the first moonwalk, anticipating the first L Word show. I, I think I sort of felt that way. I remember thinking as I was watching it that it was going to catch on like wildfire. Seeing it unfold that first season was such a thrill. It was really gratifying to know that our story was being told. She made me watch the show. I, I didn't even think about it in the beginning. And I got on the Stairmaster one night and I just like didn't get off the Stairmaster for like four episodes. Uh, the L word is really like a, a lesbian potluck without casseroles. We just had immediately had viewing parties. I remember that I was sitting in my house on my sofa with four friends. We were all lined up, like, anxiously awaiting the moment when the words and pictures came on the screen. Here was a subject that heretofore had been completely taboo, and here it was coming out on cable television. The friendships in the show really felt the most solid. They got that right every time. They're really well-developed characters. I think my favorite character is Alice. She is so questioning of everything, so determined to get things right. It's hard to have one favorite character in the L Word. The fact that straight people watched the L Word from the beginning and we all knew that, I think that made lesbians like the show even more. I think it's great that so many straight women are absolutely devoted to watching this show and I think it's great that men watch it gay and straight alike. Oh, my first reaction was, oh, shit. I thought it was very sexual and <laughs> hot show. I say too much? <laughs> I'd like to thank the uh, L word for totally dismissing the notion of lesbian bed death. Those girls had sex. Any of us who've had to watch years of heterosexual sex, it's about time that we be able to see something that relates to our lives. There are some times when I think my partner enjoys the L word just a little bit too much. <laughs> On a winter night in January of 2004, the series debuted to much fanfare and much press. It's an amazing pilot. It's an amazing pilot. It's hot, 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 lot of hot stuff happening I'm going to tell my mom not to watch it. <laughs> yes. Lesbianism seemed poised for popularity as the show enthusiastically crashed the mostly straight television landscape. I remember there being a lot of hype around the show. It's really exciting to see something that especially you're so proud of get all this attention. People have such high expectations and... You know, that can be detrimental at times. It might arouse a little bit of controversy. It may be a little over the top. This is the type of show that will make America ready for a show like this. We all felt this huge responsibility being the first out of the gate. We set out to make a good show, to tell good stories, to entertain, and to aspire to the same success that anyone else aspires to who's making a primetime television show. It's for the girls, it's our turn. While the series was undoubtedly pioneering, its assumed audience felt most left behind. Many lesbians felt the show had failed to deliver on its central promise to represent the community in an accurate way. Part of the goal for a lot of us was to make this pretty normal programming. But clearly there were a number of women who were looking to us to represent them, finally. We saw that in the panel discussions, like, right off the bat. This woman stood up and she said, you don't represent, this show doesn't represent me. Not all lesbians are, are beautiful and slim and have great careers. Which was really funny because when we did go fish, the complaint was not all lesbians are ugly. You can't please them. Hello to the children. I drank from the fountain poster. A show when that's the first of its kind it's very very important for people to have a voice a criticism I think from the fans is just as important as the praise you can feel like you still live in a democracy where people can 
talk about how they want to be represented and what they want to see. Present for bet. Oh my god, that's good. We're really the voice of those women in a weird way. Not completely because that's impossible, but you have to create something new and something um, to help push things forward. Hello and welcome to the wardrobe department of The L Word. One component of the show raised all eyebrows, some quizzically. Riding the high heels of Sex in the City, The L Word redressed the lesbian image in very haute couture. But the Birkenstocks and flannel were harder to clean out of the closet than anticipated. A lot about the show was trying to break out of stereotypes politically, visually, in all those sort of arenas, so um, fashion just fell into that naturally. The people on Friends are better looking than most straight people out there and more witty and charming. The women of the L word match that paradigm. Rose Trochet fought really hard to try to keep it as real as possible, but you know how that goes. It's television. What do you do? I didn't want it to be, you know, a kitchen sink drama at all. I sort of wanted it to be a slightly more realistic. But then again, I'm coming from an East Coast mentality, creating like a West Coast show. We started to challenge the way lesbians think they should be looking or need to be looking to be able to be identified as a lesbian. Look at the shoes. Would you wear high heel sandals with tapered jeans? Yes. No. We had to do a show like this because it was the first of its kind. And on that level, I think it had to be a little bit of the fantasy. It had to be a little bit shinier and glossier. On our show, Lesbians do carry purses. Eileen's version of it is a very enticing world. A lot of people don't necessarily tune into TV to watch gritty reality. They want a bit of escapism. If I was to envision the show back then, I think everyone would have been in jeans and t-shirts and I don't think it would have been as dramatic or heightened or soapy or any of those things. And guess what? I think I would have made a really boring show. Just call me Elise, the bisexual fashion victim. I'm sorry, is my hat too much? A little. The first response.